Gatlinburg, Tennessee. You have black bears roaming around, like right there in the mix. Right, and that's uh, that's something that kind of comes up in the excerpts is how like they kind of coexist. You know? Yeah. How does that even work? Like, how do you have 11 million people coming to this place? Right. And all these bears just kind of like doing their thing. Well, it sounds like, and and you know maybe we'll get into this a little bit more, but um, it seems like it's it's all about the park, right? The Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Okay. That's really where the bears make their home. Makes sense. Right. Um, and that that provides them with a lot of you know natural food sources. Yeah. And and it sounds like the park is very. Uh, you know, they put a lot of effort into making sure that the bears stay away from the tourists as much as possible. That's good. I mean, because, you know, from the tourist perspective, it's like, oh, it'd be so cool to see a bear. Oh, absolutely. But also, you know, I don't want to be like, you know, face to face with a bear. Yeah, you got to be safe, right? Yeah. You got to have some respect for the wildlife. For sure. But, you know, you're right, though. It is kind of, uh, it's a pretty unique thing yeah. to have, to be able to say that you can you know, potentially see a bear in this in this town. Yeah, that's a draw for a lot of people. It's that um, it's that kind of uh, I guess you could say like that wilderness aspects, right? That's right there on the doorstep of, of all these you know tourist attractions and things like that. And speaking of the tourist attractions, I was kind of um, struck by how how much variety there is. Oh yeah. You know, we've talked about the bears and the natural beauty. Yeah. But then you've also got things like. Like the Alpine slide mm -hmm. and the uh, the sky bridge, which sounds terrifying. Oh, is that the uh, is that the one that's like way up high? Yeah. And it's just like glass. It looks like you're walking on air. Oh yeah, I've seen pictures. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. That is kind of wild. Yeah. So it seems like Gatlinburg really has a little bit of something for everyone. It's interesting how you you touch on that because that that really is kind of the the. I guess you could say the theme that kind of emerges from these excerpts, right, is that you have um, this sort of like dichotomy, right? You have the the thrills, mm -hmm. like you're talking about, yeah. but then you also have this like real tranquility, right? You have yeah. the the peacefulness of the park, right, and the the beauty of nature. Yeah, I mean, it's not every day you find a place that can offer you both, like a heart pounding sky bridge walk. Right. And then also, like, you know, a peaceful hike in the woods. Exactly. Like, right. it caters to those who, you know, are looking for adrenaline and excitement. Mm -hmm. But then it also welcomes those who just want to, you know, escape and kind of reconnect with nature. Yeah. And and it's and it seems like that kind of um, that it kind of duality is woven into the history of the town as well. Oh, how so? Well, you know, it's it's obviously a very popular tourist destination now. Right. But it wasn't always that way, right? Yeah. It started out as this this kind of, you know, quiet mountain town. Yeah, you're right. And that's mm -hmm. that's actually something that some of these excerpts touch on is uh how Gatlinburg has evolved over time. Mm -hmm. And it's it's got a history that dates back to like the early eighteen hundreds. Wow. So it's got deep roots. So it was always like, you know, Ripley's believe it or not and, and all that. No. No, not at all. I mean, you go back a couple hundred years it, it was very different place it was mm. um you know a, a lot of these excerpts kind of hint at this idea of it being this sort of like you know quiet um almost almost isolated you know mountain community yeah it's fascinating to think about like what what drew the first settlers there right what was it that made them say okay we're gonna we're gonna set down roots in these mountains yeah, because it must have been pretty uh, pretty wild back then. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, you think about it, no real roads, no real infrastructure. You're talking about, you know, roughing it in the truest sense of the word. Yeah, and yet they saw something there. They saw something special. They must have. And you know what? It's interesting because even though Gatlinburg has obviously changed a lot since mm -hmm. then, it's become this bustling tourist destination. There's still a strong sense of that pioneer spirit, wouldn't you say? Oh, for sure. I mean, you can... You can definitely feel it when you read through these excerpts. Yeah. Like there's this this real sense of history and and heritage. It's in the it's in the culture. It's in the people. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely in the food. Oh, yeah. We haven't even gotten to the food yet. Oh, man. Yeah. We could do a whole another deep dive just on the food in Gatlinburg. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. But I mean, you think about it, you know, those early settlers, they had to be resourceful. Right. They had to live off the land. Right. Right. And that's like the heart of Appalachian cuisine, isn't it? Exactly. Like it's all about like, you know, using what you have, making the most of it. 
resourcefulness, simplicity, and a whole lot of flavor. Eh. You know, I'm, I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. Me too. But you know what else is interesting? I that. Is that even with all the changes Gatlinburg has gone through, yeah. that, that connection to its roots, it hasn't faded. No, not at all. And, and I think a big part of that is uh, the arts and crafts community. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's something that comes up a lot in these excerpts. Yeah, and it seems like it's it's not just a place to buy souvenirs, you know? It's a real authentic expression of Appalachian culture. Absolutely, and that really speaks to, you know, that desire to hold on to those traditions, mm -hmm. to keep those skills alive. Mm. And, you know, when you think about it, it's, it's more than just arts and crafts, right? Mm. It's about storytelling. Oh, yeah. Like, each piece has a story behind it, you know, a connection to the past. Exactly. And that's something yeah. that I think really resonates with people. You know, this idea that you're not just buying an object, you're buying a piece of history, a piece of someone's heart and soul. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. You're buying into a legacy. Exactly. Which is, you know, pretty powerful when you think about it. It is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's it's kind of remarkable how Gatlinburg has managed to strike that balance, right, mm -hmm. between preserving its heritage yeah, and embracing its identity as a modern tourist destination. And it sounds like the arts and crafts community plays a really important role in that. It really does. It's like a bridge between the past and the present, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would agree with that. It allows visitors to connect with those traditions, those skills, mm -hmm. to see firsthand how things were made, how stories were told, and how that spirit of ingenuity and creativity is still very much alive today. And speaking of creativity, one thing that really jumped out at me from the excerpts was the description of the quilts. The quilts? Oh, yeah, they're famous for their quilting. Yeah, and I mean, I, I've always loved quilts. I just, I love the history behind them, the artistry. Absolutely. But the way they described the Gatlinburg quilts was just, it was so vivid. Like, they talked about them being these intricate tapestries of color and pattern, each one telling a story. Right, and, you know, each stitch... It's almost like it holds a little piece of history. Yeah, and and I love that they're still made by hand. Oh, absolutely. That's what makes them so special. Yeah. It's like, you know, in a world of mass production, you know, you have these artisans who are still creating these beautiful one-of-a-kind pieces using the same techniques that have been passed down for generations. Absolutely. It's a testament to their skill, their dedication, and their passion for preserving those traditions. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It's not just about preserving the past either. Oh. A lot of these quilters they're incorporating modern designs, modern fabrics really? into their work. Uh, so it's this really cool blend of old and new. That's so cool. See, that's what I love about Gatlinburg. It's like this this perfect blend of like honoring its past, mm -hmm. but also like, you know, not being afraid to evolve and embrace new things. Absolutely. It's about finding that harmony between tradition and innovation. And I think that's what makes it such a special place. It's a place where the past isn't just preserved. It's celebrated and woven into the fabric of everyday life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so we've talked about the bears, the attractions, the history, the quilts. What else have we got? What other surprises does Gatlinburg have in store for us? Well, we've only just scratched the surface. We haven't even gotten to the music, the festivals, the moonshine. Oh, right, the moonshine. We can't forget about the moonshine. It's as much a part of Appalachian culture as the mountains themselves. Okay, so let's talk moonshine. Let's do it. Yeah. I mean, have you ever tried authentic Appalachian moonshine? You know, I've had, like, you know, the store-bought stuff. Right, right. But uh, I'm guessing it's a little different in Gatlinburg. Oh, it's a whole different experience. You're talking about recipes that have been passed down for generations. Family secrets, you know, whispered from one generation to the next. And it's not just about the taste. It's about the history, the tradition, the craftsmanship. So it's like, it's almost like an art form. In a way, yeah. It's about taking something simple, mm. you know, corn, sugar, water, and transforming it into something special. Yeah. I'm intrigued. We have to talk more about this. But first, I got to know, when we come back from this break, we got to talk about Ripley's Aquarium. Because I am fascinated by the idea of an aquarium in the mountains. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Sharks and mountains. Who would have thought? Yeah. We'll dive into that right after this. Yeah, sharks and mountains. What's up with that? Right. It's not exactly the pairing you'd expect. Not at all. But hey, that seems to be kind of Gatlinburg's... Uh, I don't know, it's thing, right? Like they just embrace these these unexpected combinations. You know, like a weird, wonderful mix. Exactly. And it works. You know, you've got the, the history, the nature, the kind of quirky attractions. It's like they're saying, yeah, we've got it all. Come and be surprised. Right. 
And that's kind of refreshing, don't you think, in a world that's, you know, often so predictable. Absolutely. 